In this video, I reacted to negative reviews of popular rom-coms on Letterboxd. Here are the results. Hello folks, my name is Chris, but you can call me Ganhu or your Valentine, cause it's Valentine season. Please be mine right now. Do you know those candies they always distribute around Valentine's Day? You know, the ones that suck. I don't think they even sell those. I think they just show up randomly in like the little candy dish or candy jar at the front office or, or in a first grade classroom. I put one in my mouth. Pua! They're gross! They taste like chalk! So I went to Letterboxd to give a review of these terrible candies. Half star! It'd be a zero out of five if they let me rank it that low, and it would be out of hearts instead of stars if they put their hearts into it. See what I did there. And then I started looking around this marvelous little app and I realized you can rank and review more than just terrible candies. You could do that to movies too. Who to thunk on the movie review app letterbox. Last time we did something like this, it was for my personal favorite movies, but I figure before we talk about more movies that I particularly love, I'd get into the season of love and decide to look at rom-coms that get negative review treatment too. Rom-coms, chick flicks, the like. And most of these reviews were procured by my girlfriend, Rin, because she knows a little more about rom-coms and I'm just a regular film bro. Let's go. Reaffirming gender stereotypes. Hell yeah, brother. Top Gun, best movie 2022. Marry Me. This is a more recent rom-com. This came out last year and, you know, to be honest, I, I wasn't really interested in watching this at all, so I didn't watch it. I think there's maybe one movie on this whole list that we're going through here that I actually have seen, so we'll see what people say about it. Oh, Oh, 24 frames of Nick, he's a, I think he's a YouTuber. Throughout the movie, there is this unbelievable lens distortion that fucking hurts your eyes and is so funny. It makes everyone look like fucking stick people. From the trailers, I didn't get that impression, like just from my memory of what the trailers look like. So it would be really funny if those are all the moments where that's not the case. And when JLo's like performing or something like that, she's doing her like mega pop star thing. Just you look out in the audience and just like PNGs of, of audience members just overlaid on top of each other all cheering like how they did in like old video games where they couldn't you know render out or model like entire audiences it's just one camera but it happens so much and it's so funny but also love bad rom-coms fun movie that's why that's why it's not like half star it's star and a half so I'll, I'll i'll let that i'll let that one slide one star for marry me obsessed with the fact that ben affleck had to sit down and watch this what he's dating j-lo again right or he was was he dating j-lo when this came out he had to get cucked by owen wilson <laughs> Cock chow. you gotta be shitting me <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. I really can't believe you said that. <laughs> and with a little riz, you could be just like me. Cuck child. You gotta stop saying all the good jokes in the video. All the good <laughs> jokes are from you. <laughs> you take the mic. You take the mic and you get over here. I swear, 90% of this movie was shot on a GoPro. Another comment about the shitty cinematography. I feel like I have to watch this movie now. I was drawn to something like Elvis because I knew the cinematography would be crazy. I, I ended up loving Elvis for that reason. So to see a movie that's like, it, it's a detriment to the viewing experience for how weird the camera looks. I, I gotta see it. I, all of these negative reviews are honestly more enticing to me than trailers for the movie when it originally came out. 13 going on 30. This movie came on TV shortly after the Avengers had released. I saw Mark Ruffalo and thought it was a sequel to The Hulk. He did not Hulk out. I was tricked into watching a cliche early 2000s rom-com. I was lied to, betrayed, very disappointed. Fair. Fair to give it a half star for that reason. If I see I see Marvel actor on TV, uh, that better be Iron Man or I'm turning that shit off. Why, why, why is he related to Robert Duvall now? No, that's Iron Man, bitch. Why is he in the courtroom? I hate this movie. I hate the acting, the writing, the cinematography, the directing, the plot, the character arcs, Jennifer Gardner's performance. Everything is bad, so bad. Mark looks like he is in hell and Jennifer's acting is so stupid in this movie. I hate it so much. Also like there's no, oh my God, there's no punctuations in this whole fucking thing. Also, there's like no point in the 
plot and it has a lot of problematic and annoying overdone themes and motifs that just piss me off so much. I, 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 it doesn't even have a nostalgic feel uh, to it. I, I genuinely do not understand how anybody can enjoy this in the slightest way. Periods and commas are okay to use. You can use them sometimes. Coming of age movies are the most overhated movie genre ever. They give you emotions you didn't know you had, the music they have, the tears you lose at the end where they finally grow up and learn, when they got their first heartbreak, when they go from little middle middle schooler to married with 19 kids. I love these movies. Half star review. No detail on why they didn't like it. Talked about the genre. This film is essentially a ripoff version of Big Also. If you want to watch, oh fucking god I read that wrong. <laughs> punctuations, that's not my fault, you need punctuations, god damn you. This film is essentially a ripoff of Big. Also, if you want to watch a better feel-good teen movie, watch Ferris Bueller's Day Off or The Breakfast Club. Whoa, The Breakfast Club is not a feel-good teen movie. No, sometimes you make the wrong choice and you just have to live with it. You can't just go back in time and be less of a bitch. Life do be like that sometimes. Also, the end house looked bad. <laughs> This user, they take production design very seriously. The house has to look nice. Unrelatable and completely impossible. <laughs> Dude, I have a genre of movies you're gonna fucking hate. It's called fantasy. Don't watch it because none of that shit is possible. Science fiction, oh, don't get me started. Not possible. I hate films like this. Stop, it is so stupid and a complete waste of money. I would like my life to be like hers was, but that is completely impossible, as I stated before. And I conclude, and that's it. And concluding my review. As I stated before, it is impossible. Do not make movies with impossible premises. If your movie is fictional, I don't want to see it. Do not show it to me. If it can't happen in real life, it shouldn't be put to film. How to lose a guy in 10 days. How to lose my attention in 10 minutes. Boom, we're mic drop, mic drop. <laughs> Dude, retweet this one. Predictable and cheesy, but you know what? I had fun. I had fun. That's why I'm giving this the equivalent of a five out of 10. Give, give this a three star. It's deserving of it. McDilf, 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 McDilf. This doesn't count as a negative review. You're just saying McDilf over and over. Matthew McConaughey is your, is your daddy? He's your daddy? Damn, this person fucking, I could tell this person hated this movie. I'm sorry, but none of it made sense. They hated each other for like seven days and then connected in two hours and they were the best 10 days of her life? Come on, girl, you got a master's degree. Are you sure you had no other better day in your life? That is, that is a remark I would probably say. I hate Matthew McConaughey's character. I hate him and I feel like they literally did nothing to redeem him at all. He was just so unlikable. Not only that his face is unsettling and it seems Italian, there's too much, ah, 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 get out of my face, Matthew McConaughey, get away from her. <laughs> this person just hates Matthew McConaughey. This is even about the movie now. And why do they find the ugliest rat dog in existence? I need to see what the dog looks like now. How to lose a guy in 10 days, dog. Not the ugliest? That dog sucks, I will say. Sorry, dog lovers. That dog sucks. I feel like it had great potential, but it completely wasted with bad writing. It was so boring. I had to skip through like a third of the movie. You can't, no, 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 stop right there. You can't review a movie that you were skipping parts of. You didn't watch the movie. You watched parts of the movie. That does not count. One of my least favorite movies, too awkward for its own good. Burn in Hell. That's a little intense. I, I you know, Dude, I watched Plane this year and it sucked. I'm not gonna tell Gerard Butler to burn in hell. Overall, 0.5 out of five, a bag of shit lit on fire out of 10. Dude, I don't think you know what it's like to have a bag of shit lit on fire, like on your doorstep. Cause uh, that is probably worse than this movie. I'm gonna be honest. Like to take you at face value, a bag of flaming shit is definitely worse than this movie. Whoa. I'm not reading all that. This movie was released on February 7th, 2003, approximately six weeks before America invaded Iraq. Katherine Hahn should have been the lead. <laughs> yeah, if, if Katherine Hahn were, were the lead in this movie, I'm sure George W. would have had second thoughts about uh, about invading. I think we would have we would have saved a lot of, a lot of men's lives there. The jokes are awful. I hate, hate, hate the scene where she is drunk. It is not a nice romance movie or at all laugh out loud funny. I was more like, what is happening? 
Skip. Okay. I mean, keeping it real, I guess. Keeping it real. I don't even know exactly how, how you feel about the movie. That's just, that's just a hilarious train of thought <laughs> explanation of why you don't like it. Was hoping this movie would be like 10 Things I Hate About You. Instead, it's the most chronically unfunny early 2000s thing I've ever seen. And it has not aged well. It left me wanting to punch Matthew McConaughey for no real reason. Very hard to watch. It sounds like you have real reason. If It sounds like the movie is the reason you want to punch Matthew McConaughey. How to shit a fart in diarrhea days. <laughs> Bro, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Never seen the movie. I fully agree. I only lasted 19 minutes of this movie, but earlier today I was thinking about how 2008 to 2010 really was the golden age of reality TV because there was this one season of Celebrity Apprentice that had Latoya Jackson, Joan Rivers, Little John, John Rich, Nene Lakes, Star Jones, and like Star and Nene absolutely hated each other. And then there was a one episode where our former president was. Would you guess this review ends with them talking about Osama bin Laden dying? No. I wouldn't. We are two for two on uh, Iraq war material in these letterbox reviews. When Harry met Sally. I've seen better fake orgasms, Ben Shapiro. <laughs> oh, oh, I've, oh God. Her wet ass P word. I, I've actually seen better fake orgasms. That is not how women come. That's not making it into the video. <laughs> My horrible Ben Shapiro. <laughs> the fact that the scene where Harry and Sally watched Casablanca at the same time while talking on the phone was something Rob Reiner and Billy Crystal did every night. Fellas, is it gay to base a heterosexual romantic comedy you're directing on your real life friendship with the lead actor? I didn't realize that about When Harry Met Sally. I, I haven't seen When Harry Met Sally, but I do know that scene. I think I know all like the important scenes from from that movie. That's crazy. I didn't realize it was a thing that like two bros did. Is Rob Reiner trying to tell us something or I don't know. My big fat Greek wedding. I get what they were going for, but just found the whole thing incredibly boring and very unfunny. That's why I'm giving it two stars out of five. Four out of 10. If something's very boring and incredibly unfunny, can you rate it any higher than a three? I'm sorry to like split hairs here, but four means there's gotta be something redeeming about it. Like this is an almost mid movie to you. If, if it's completely boring and super unfunny, what is saving it from being a half star. It, they shot it on a camera and I could hear them talking. So honestly, I have to give them at least four stars, but it was fucking boring. So I can't get it any higher than that. Forced to see this because the family wanted to, and it's just mediocre the second time around. A feature length pilot for a sitcom that would probably be canceled after four episodes. Not how television works. Now, now actually they would have the whole season come oh, out. And brother, if it, this guy stinks! There, I did the good Ben Shapiro bit well after the Ben Shapiro review. And you could see the jokes coming from a big fat mile away. Dude, put that in your blog. I will definitely tweet about it. 10 things I hate about you. Stream this off Disney Plus and it buffered the entire time. Also blah, whatever. It's a movie, I guess. That review shouldn't count. That pisses me off. I haven't even fucking seen 10 things I hate about you. But for the sake of this movie, I hate that that review counts against the entire rating that that movie gets on Letterboxd. That is a problem with Disney Plus. That's a problem with your home internet. That, dude, that's not even a Disney Plus issue, let alone the movie's fault. It's a movie, I guess. Come on, why, why, why is that allowed? I, you, that, sh that should be grounds for account termination. That's gross negligence. Oh, this might be the most pretentious review I'm gonna read throughout this whole video. This person wrote a fucking poem about ten things I hate about you. It's based on Shakespeare. I hate the 90s, the movies, the songs. I hate the humor, so edgy, it thinks. I hate all the fashions, so many wrongs. The characters here, each one of them stinks. I hate brass band music and prefab funk. I hate how a whole generation was con. Sold fake rebellion by Disney, it's junk. And yes, I do also hate Legally Blonde. I hate how Cat's values just disappear. As fast as her eyebrows, where did they go? By the end of the film, even Shakespeare was something I hated. Sorry, I know. And unlike Cat, I'm not a quitter. I wrote in iambic pentameter, pent, pentameter, pent, pentameter. I don't give a shit. For the sake of the, for the sake of this poem, it was supposed to rhyme, and it doesn't because it's fucking stupid. While you were sleeping, while you were shitting. <laughs> That's so dumb. That's stupid. No insight as to why they didn't like the movie or why they didn't have a good time. Did they watch this while you were shitting? Did you watch this while you were shitting? One of the most dramatically inert rom-coms I've ever seen. Oh shit, we're, we're pulling out 
physics. We're talking about inertia now. There are bright spots early on as the film sets up what should be a winning premise, but it never really recovers from an interminable, oh God damn, this dude pulled out the thesaurus and I I'm, I famously can't read. So I, I'm too dumb for this review. By the end, let me tell you, I was the one that was sleeping. Oh, that is some shit I would say. That is a thousand percent some shit I would say. So I got, I can't be mad at this review. You've got mail. Pretty goddamn awful. Was I supposed to sympathize with Meg Ryan's character? Look, if a business competitor offers a much better product than you, whoa, is this a boot licking review? If a business competitor offers a much better product than you, does that make them odious in some manner? Fuck that foolishness. The problem is that she comes across as very crass, demanding, and unlikable. And Hanks is a cardboard stereotype of a smug businessman who later grows a heart. Thus, there is zero investment in their relationship or its standard tired twists and turns. Crap. And then gives a very precise score of 21 out of 100. Reviews like that, I would like to see the rubric. I, what, what specifically gave it 21 out of your 100 scorecard? This is the most dated and charmless movie to exist. The only thing that holds up is Tom Hanks explaining The Godfather to Meg Ryan over instant messenger email, whatever God fuck this movie. The only redeeming quality in this movie was a film bro mansplaining a highly acclaimed, culturally significant piece of art to a woman who definitely also would have been alive when that movie came out. Oh, well, it was posted by, uh, by a person named Megan, so I'm not gonna assume anything, but... Doesn't look good, that does not look good. I've managed to avoid watching this film for almost 20 years. It's a rom-com, so not really a genre I'm generally interested in. Well, I decided I wanted something stupid that wouldn't take any thought, and I wouldn't need to stop for bathroom breaks because it was on the predictable side. This was all of that and worse. I think my brain rotted from the time I spent on this. Also, don't whine about your independent bookstore going out of business because of a big corporate story while sipping your star. Oh my God, but you have phone. Don't complain, you have phone. Why you have iPhone? Why you drive car? Oh my God, fuck everything you just said. I don't care, your opinion doesn't matter. Easy A, weird protagonist. I mean, she's smart, but she chose to be a slut. Oh, hell no. Dude, mm, misogyny check. Weird story, I mean, who wants to be a school slut? Weird family, what is it with the weird joke and interaction. Weird best friend. Rhea is a total bitch, getting major misogyny. Weird school, they don't punish her with all the rumor? Conclusion, weird movie. You can't have a movie where you can disagree with somebody making choices, like you have to agree with them or else Half star, uh-uh, not doing it. I got brain damage? The fact that she referenced the fucking Scarlet Letter is sending me. That's the point of the movie. It is the Scarlet, oh, give me a break. If it's sending you, can you give it a, a nicer score, please? This is quite literally the worst film I've seen in my life, but it was funny to laugh at. It was a comedy, bro. The movie did its job. 50 first dates. Turned this off after five minutes when the walrus vomited for 30 seconds straight and started watching an episode of Practical Jokers instead. Is this Adam Sandler? Chandler's first miss. What about, I'm like trying to figure out why you turn the movie off and put on Impractical Jokers because it sounds like this movie's right up your alley, dude. I, I'm saying that as somebody who likes Impractical Jokers, like it's a walrus vomiting for five minutes straight and you turned it off? That's comedic gold. What more do you want? Why is this set against a backdrop of such cruel and violently offensive characters of Hawaiian people? The racism was so unnecessary. This could have just been a cute rom-com. I don't understand. I agree, that holds the movie back. That keeps it from being a, a decent movie, a decent fun time. It's already kind of like a hokey rom-com and you know, how they portray Hawaiian cultures sometimes is uh, really bad. Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Every cliche out of the straight man fantasy playbook from start to finish. A real study of what films shouldn't be. So glad 2008 is far behind us. It's like just 10 years out. It's not so far behind us. Like I remember 2008. I don't remember much uh, like from my childhood. I do remember 2008. We still feel 2008. We're not that far away. It felt so long and so gay. <laughs> You have two sides of the same coin. This movie shouldn't have been made, it's problematic. This movie's gay. <laughs> uh, what a perfect way to end this. Fellas, is it gay to watch rom-coms? Is it, is it gay to celebrate Valentine's Day? Uh, hope you watch a good rom-com this Valentine's Day. If you made it this far, thank you so much. Feel free to do a couple things for me. Click the link tree, join my Discord, like this video, and subscribe for more. Happy Valentine's Day, folks. Love y'all. Love you. Mm -hmm. Again, who loved you? Mm -hmm.